It's always game day in Cleveland, brought to you locally by our good friends at Smiley One and Brian, Northeast Ohio's premier heating and cooling systems. All right, my friend, Daryl Ryder, I'm Andy Baskin. A lot of news to talk about over the last 48 hours. Let's start with the trade deadline. That's probably a good place to start. The, uh, first of all, your reaction to the fact that the Browns really didn't do a whole lot other than trade uh, DPJ. Yeah, really not surprised by uh, either move or the lack of uh, a secondary move beyond them trading Donovan Peoples-Jones. Let, let's be honest about Andy. DPJ just didn't fit into the big picture. I mean, he, he had a great year last year, breakout year. Um, I, I hate seeing him traded just because he's uh, a rare guy that can actually catch a football with someone defending him, which has mm-hmm. been problematic for the Browns to draft since 1999. So I, I think in that respect, it hurts. But um they added Elijah Moore. They added Marquise Goodwin in the offseason, and I think that that just kind of eliminated uh, a lot of DPJ's opportunity uh, within this offense. And and it, look, it, it it bears out in the fact that he only got 18 targets through the first seven games. Now, I asked Kevin Stefanski about that, and he, he's like, well, that's kind of a small sample size. Well, okay, well, then what about everyone else getting all these targets, right? Right. Uh, you know, a couple guys in the locker room talked about DPJ's willingness to block as well, even when he wasn't getting targets. So, uh, but I'm not surprised by the move. Uh, I'm not up in arms about the move because I understand it. He was in the last year of his rookie contract. Uh, quite honestly, had he had another uh, productive season here with the Browns, he would have commanded money that the Browns would not have to be able to pay. So, it made sense to move him. I mean, they got a 2025 sixth round pick for him, you know, whatever. He gets to go home to to Detroit where he's from. Yeah, uh, I thought they did him a solid on that, Daryl. I mean, to be honest, he's playing in the shadow of his high school, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Castex right down the street. Yeah, less than a mile from Ford Field. I, I, I think he's actually playing uh, the closest of any player in history to where, uh, <laughs> you know, he played high school football. But you're right. They did kind of do him a solid there. You know, Kevin Stefanski had some real nice things to say. Uh, about him, uh, you know, talked about how he grew up within the building, uh, had some great moments for the Browns, obviously wishing him the best. But um, the, the reality is that there's only there's only one football to go around. Right. And uh, he's going to get an opportunity to be a, a pretty significant contributor to a very good Detroit Lions football team. So uh, I am anticipating that we'll see DPJ playing beyond uh week uh 18 here so what happened and i i caught you on the morning show just talking about what do you have 17 targets this year i mean he hardly had any 18 targets this year so who picks up those uh, 18 exquisite targets that he had over the last couple (laughs) years because i i just think it's it's interesting how everyone's kind of playing into this just saying what they think is going to happen i i can't tell you what's going to happen you tell me who's going to Maybe pick up the the low. They need a quarterback that can get them the ball. That's the well, you gotta start there. Well, details, Andy. We'll get I'm sorry. Sorry for letting the facts get in the way of the story. We'll we'll get to the bleep show as their quarterback situation in a moment. But um Cedric Tillman, I think the door opens for him. Uh, you know, the the rookie third round pick uh from this past draft. Um yeah. Marquise Goodwin get more time. I, they try to get him the ball. I you help me tell me. I look, I mean those those 18 targets that that's a tough division. <laughs> that's tough to spread that out. Well, this. you're looking at one or two a game for the rest of the season. I mean oh. every pass is special. Or bouncing off helmets and into the oppositions. Oh, I'm sorry. Too soon for that. Too soon. Way too soon. All right. Now yeah, and it's funny, you know, listen to Kevin Stefanski talk about eliminating turnovers because they have like 17, 18 of them so far. <clears throat> well, one of them are interceptions. They don't have a ball security problem. They have a throwing the football problem. <laughs> I'll buy that. I'll what? buy that. Can it be fixed? Uh, Does it matter who the quarterback is, whether it's Deshaun Watson? I mean, last yeah, time out, Deshaun had five passes. Two went to the other team. Yeah, I, well, only one of those counted, though, Andy. Uh, two went to the other team. Doesn't only one of those counted. Team. Two went to the other team. Let's, uh, let's it, not ignore that. It was an incomplete pass. Sure it was. It was an incomplete pass. All right, Just it said. should have been caught. It should have been two the other way. Let's. Well, not, I'm, we're arguing not- semantics here. I the, 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 the Look, let's put it this way. Only three of the passes that he threw out of the five went to Browns. How's that sound? Well, uh, Fair? Better? Reality? Yeah, sure, whatever. I don't. 
it's reality, Daryl. I mean, that's it's, it's it. Can you can you I, tell that I am I'm completely exhausted by Deshaun Watson already? So are we. Everyone is, Daryl. I it's just like <laughs> because the entire franchise is literally hanging by his micro fracture. No, it's tear. not micro tear. Sorry. I'm hanging by a fracture. You're hanging by a tear. Uh, oh, no, it's I'm not hang- a micro tear now? No, I'm hanging by a thread. <laughs> yeah, That's, we all are. Yeah, it's it's been um Tom Withers of the Associated Press. I have to give him the credit because he's the one that came up. It, it's been it's been 40 days, and then I added and 40 nights of this. I mean, the snow was the flood on Halloween. I, I, you know what? I wish it was a micro fracture. I don't think it would hurt as bad. I, I don't know. He, so here's what I saw at practice on Wednesday from him. Can't wait I don't to think, see. For the record, I don't think he's playing Sunday. Okay. Now, okay. Kevin Stefanski is doing what he did leading up to the Colts game. Not going to say a whole lot. Not sure. Right. We're see how the week plays out. Yada, yada, yada. I, I get it, but I, I wouldn't play him this week. So here's what I saw at practice. A lot of shaking in the arm, which that means there's discomfort as he's throwing. So he's there, you know, he throws the football, and then he's just kind of here. You know, if you're watching on YouTube, he's kind of like doing a lot of this stuff with the arm. That's okay. Chicken doing. wing is what I would describe that. Right. As. So clearly he is not comfortable uh, with how that arm is feeling. Now, we did not speak with Watson on Wednesday, um, and I'm not going to make a big deal of it because Deshaun – in his own way, asked us not to, if he doesn't speak on Wednesday, not to freak out. Uh, right. Now, we don't speak to him on Thursday. Well, then I, I think that that kind of tells us where things are going. I honestly don't think he should play this week. I don't think he's going to play this week. I just don't think it's smart. Let that thing keep calming down. Um, but this is week six of this, and this was not supposed to be a long-term injury. And we're in long-term injury situation. I, you know, the Browns completely botched this thing from day one. They should have put him on injured reserve right away. Uh, I also understand, though, there was only so much information that they had at their disposal at the time, which is why they felt like it wasn't going to be a, a long-term situation. We all know the story. They had to wait for the swelling to go down to get that really good MRI that revealed those micro tears. Uh, now we have residual swelling a- after the Colts game. Take the week off to rest and rehab. So here we are now. Uh, a week later, and he's back on the practice field. Uh, you know, accurate. He wasn't letting it rip. Like I didn't see him open it up. There were some deep passes, okay, mm-hmm. but you could tell he was just. It's he's easing back into things here. He's not just you know dropping back and just letting it rip. You could see a discernible difference in the way PJ Walker was throwing the football and DTR was throwing the football and how Deshaun Watson was throwing the football. So. Um, I'm not confident we see him this week, uh, but it remains to be seen. Kevin Stefanski clearly is trying to keep his options open. And then he did say that Walker would start if he doesn't, right? Correct. He added that. BJ Walker remains the number two quarterback if Deshaun Watson is unavailable. And, um, you know, look, the the numbers aren't great. I like PJ Walker, the person. He's a great dude. But less than when you're in the 49 percentile completion percentage, uh, when you've thrown one touchdown against five interceptions, right? I, I just it, it's not winning football. That that's just the reality of the situation. It's not winning football. The Cardinals. Here's the thing, Andy. Too the Cardinals come to town. They're what one and seven, something like that. Um, but they play a lot better than a one and seven football team. Um, and their quarterback situation right now, I don't know if it's any better than the Cleveland Browns, which we'll get into later in this podcast, but, um, I, I just, it, it's, uh, it's a complicated mess for the Cleveland Browns right now and in, in dealing, cause you don't want to push Deshaun too fast. Right. Right. And, and I'm not saying that they did that the first time. I think Deshaun pushed himself too fast, which is why I got so upset with people who do not cover the Cleveland Browns but have keyboards and microphones in front of them throwing the hogwash out there that they were throwing out there. The guy wants to play. He's willing to play. That's not the issue. He is not here collecting his paycheck. The reason the Browns are in the position they're in right now with him is because he wants to play. Because he wanted to play against Baltimore. Clearly wasn't ready. So he kept saying, I'm going to play. I'm going to play. I'm going to play. And then guess what? 
They plan for him to play, and they have to throw DTR out there. Last minute, Sunday morning, 1030. They go to DTR and say, hey, dude, you're starting today. Good luck to you, right? Um, and, and then uh, against Indianapolis, right, he wants to play. He's rehabbing, coming back. Uh, the Thursday practice and practice again on Friday feels okay. It says, or I should say, says he feels okay. I think that's important. I don't know if he felt okay. He said he felt okay. Goes out, first hit he takes in Indianapolis, boom, hits the shoulder, and now he's sidelined again. Residual swelling, needs to take another week off for rest and rehab. So please, stop saying that this guy's here collecting a paycheck and doesn't want to play for the Cleveland Browns. That's garbage. Now, you want to criticize him for not being available for those 11 games last season? That's fair game. You want to criticize him because he's got three interceptions this year, and of his starts, he only had one really good one against Tennessee, and he's only had two starts with the Cleveland Browns where he's come close to throwing for 250 yards in a game? Fine. Fair. But that, to me, is anything above and beyond that is, in my view, Andy, I feel is unfair criticism, and you're just piling on the dude because you want to pile on a dude. Like, if you're going to criticize the guy, be factual in your criticism. That's all I'm saying. All right, we've got more to come here on It's Always Game Day in Cleveland. Daryl gives you more wisdom, like we just heard, which was pretty exciting. Uh, you'll get more of that. I want to talk more about the trade deadline, uh, and there are other issues. I want to talk about some stuff going on in Berea and what practice looked like. It's Always Game Day in Cleveland.